On this episode of the Whiskey Tornado, it's a fat kid's dream. It's Barrel Seagrass 16. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Whiskey Tornado. I'm your host, Lance, and today we are embracing our inner fat kid, and we are trying Barrel Spirits Seagrass 16. If you guys have been following the channel, you know that Barrel Seagrass, uh, the regular offering from last year, I rated really highly. It was one of uh, my favorite whiskeys of 2021. So when it was announced they were going to do a 16-year version of this, I had to have it. So huge shout out goes to Narav of A1 Liquors in Effingham for supplying me this bottle. I am really excited to review it for you guys today. Before we get into the review, if you would like to see where I have ranked other whiskeys so far this year, you can head over to whiskeytornado.com. There are links for our Patreon page, for our exclusive barrel picks, for our merchandise, for my photography. You will find everything Whiskey Tornado related at whiskeytornado.com. For those of you new to the channel, I'll quickly explain our scoring system. We have seven categories. The first two categories are handicapped. Those two handicapped categories are appearance and availability. Then we move on to the nose, palette, finish, body, and value. We rank each category zero to one, 0.5 being average, and then we add all the scores up. Any score of three or better means it is bar worthy. Any score of four or more means it's bunker worthy. So buy some extra just in case the bourbon you love is no longer made. All right, with all that being said, let's get into the appearance of Barrel Seagrass 16. So before we talk about the packaging, let's talk about why we discuss packaging. The bourbon, rye, or finished whiskeys that are being put into these bottles is the distiller's artwork. And as a marketing major, I fully believe that the packaging should represent the artwork that's in the bottle. That being said, I don't think it's as important as the artwork in the bottle. So that is why this category is handicapped. If you're someone that could care less about me talking about the packaging, you can find the timestamps below and skip ahead to whatever section you'd like to see. For those of you whiskey nerds who do appreciate it, let's get into the appearance of Seagrass 16. Um, I do love the gray label with the gold etching. That is a nice touch. Uh, but the barrel bottles just do not do it for me. They're average at best. Um, I will give barrel some credit. The cork that they used is hefty. That is one serious cork. And you guys know I like a heavy cork. So well done on the cork barrel. Um, this Seagrass 16 also comes in a box. Here's the box. Um, the only problem with the box is if you grab this from the top, and the bottle is in the box, it will slide out on you. So I think that is a major design flaw. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of liquor stores that have lost bottles due to that design. So we're gonna give the appearance rating on Seagrass 16, um, just barely above average because they managed to put it in a box. <laughs> we're gonna give it a 0.6. All right, moving on to availability. This is a limited edition bottle. I should have done some research. I'm not sure how many bottles there are. I'm guessing around 6,000, but I could be wrong. Um, if, if you guys have followed the channel, you know that in order for it to be in our whiskey of the year running, I have to have found it on the shelf and at MSRP. Um, that is not the case with this. So it will not go in our whiskey of the year running, but I did want to review it for you guys just in case you happen to run across a bottle in the wild and you're trying to decide whether to pull the trigger or not. All that being said, it is a limited product. Um, and I was not able to find it on the shelf. So 
uh, we are going to give the availability a 0 0.2. All right, let's get a pour of this and get into the good stuff, the nosing, the palate. Man, I love that cork. That is a nice cork. Well done, barrel. All right. Let is, let's get into this. Here we go. Woo, boy. Man. I'm telling you, if you do not like sweet, you guys are not going to like this. This is screaming to my inner fat kid. Oh, man. It is like the first note I got was this fantastic, like rich um, vanilla pound cake note. And then just like the uh, original offering of seagrass, I get this amazing upside down pineapple note. Um, again, this is finished in Martinique rum, uh, apricot brandy barrels, and uh, Madeira um, casks. And the proof on this is 130.82 proof. It is a 16-year Canadian rye whiskey as opposed to the original offering of seagrass, which was a blend of ryes from Kentucky, Indiana, Tennessee, and Canada. I'm not sure the ages on the original seagrass, it was non-age stated. Um, so it is a little bit different, but I can tell you on the nose, man, it is almost like, there's almost some grape notes. Um, like I said, upside down pineapple, lemon lime, a little bit of floral coming through. Mm. There's uh, maybe even a little bit of that like maple rum characteristic in there. Oh, just gorgeous. We are going to give the nose a 0.7. All right, let's get into the palate, this 130 proof monster. Golly, it smells so good. Here we go. Cheers, everybody. Mmm. Mmm. -mm. If you don't like sweet, you are not going to be a fan of this. But I like sweet, and that is fantastic. Um,. It is everything the nose was. It's got all of those upside down. Uh, my mom used to make this like upside down pineapple cake and she used to make it with liqueur. Um, I think she might've used rum even, I'm not sure. But I remember when she would make it um, and she would make it when she had friends over um, and I always hated the fact that it had alcohol in it. Now this reminds me of that and, and I absolutely love it. Um, this is this is just this is a, a pineapple upside down pound cake with liqueur in it. It is really fantastic. Also, you get those lemon lime flavors, um, and you even get like if you could if you put your nose in a Jolly Rancher bag and smelled all those flavors mixed together. That's really what this is it's like. There's a bunch of stuff going on, but it's really, it melds really wonderfully together. Works really well. You get those um, kind of like gingerbread um, rum spice notes on the back end, but really faintly. It is just gorgeous. Mm, man, this is a roller coaster. I am loving it. Take another sip here. Yeah, it's. An initial wave of pineapple upside down cake, Jolly Ranchers, peach rings, and then it quickly transitions to a really um, peppery, almost um, gingerbread rum on the finish. It's gorgeous. Just ramps up with that sweet and finishes, and the finish goes forever. If you guys have ever had Angel's Envy Rye, that rye is way too sweet for me. On the finish, I get some of those Angel's Envy rye characteristics, but in the perfect amount. It's not overly sweet, and it's mixed with a little uh, pepper, almost like white pepper and spice. Uh, it's just beautiful. Finish goes on forever. Uh, this is really good. We are into exceptional category. With a big asterisk, I can see how if you do not like sweet, you will not like this. Um, but me personally, that's my palate. So I'm gonna give the palette a 0.8 on this. It's, it's beautiful. All right, moving on to the finish, and that is where this shines. The finish is beautiful. It is really long. 
Like I said, you get that initial uh, ramp of super sweet upside down pineapple cake, peach rings, lemon lime, and then it transitions into this beautiful white peppery kind of rum spice with a little bit of like uh, maple gingerbread cookie note in there. Um, it's just, it's fantastic. I'm gonna give the finish a 0.9. It's one of my favorite finishes that I've had. All right, let's move on to the body. And the body of this is beautiful. I'm not sure if you guys can see the legs on this. Um, it's not like crazy exceptional, but it is wonderful. It's super creamy, uh, viscous, coats the entire palette. We're gonna give the body a 0.7. All right, now the big question, the question you guys all came to this review for, value is it worth 250 dollars that is a extremely steep price tag seagrass the regular seagrass offering at 80 dollars was already a steep price tag so let's do a side by side we're going to taste the seagrass 16 with the original offering of seagrass see is it really worth that much more um, before i give you my value score all right, so we have got seagrass 16 on my left and the regular seagrass offering on my right. Both have been opening up for about 10, 15 minutes. So let's nose the seagrass 16 first. And it just, it gets better and better as it sits here. Mm. Just beautiful, beautiful. All right, the regular seagrass. I mean, the regular seagrass is really nice too. I think what stands out on uh, on the 16 is the sweetness. Uh, there's more sweetness on the 16 to me than on the regular seagrass. I personally like the nose on the seagrass 16 better. So we're gonna give that edge to it there. Let's move on to the palette, seagrass 16. Mm, just gorgeous, regular seagrass. Oh, that's wild. Side by side, excuse me, I can tell you what stands out. What stands out to me is that you can really pick up the MGP rye, that probably 95.5 rye blend that's used in the regular seagrass. That stands out. It tastes a little bit more youthful, obviously, because you're talking about 16 year Canadian versus this. Um, and the Madeira sticks out a little bit more in the regular seagrass offering. Both are good, but I don't even think it's close as far as uh, palettes are concerned. For my personal palette, I really prefer the 16, um, but the regular seagrass is great too. And the finish is, is not really close either. Regular seagrass at 119 proof, 119.84. Uh, it does feel like there's not, it's not as viscous as 130 proof. The finish isn't as long, so we got to give the finish to um, the Seagrass 16. Now the question is, is Seagrass 16 worth 250 when you can get Seagrass, um, the regular Seagrass offering at 80? And I don't believe so. I would love to see Seagrass 16 at about 150 bucks. At 150 bucks, I would jump this value up and this would be a bunker worthy bottle for me. But where it's at now, at 250, almost 100 bucks more, um, I could see paying twice, maybe twice uh, for regular seagrass uh, for seagrass 16. But, um, but even that is a little bit of a stretch. So on value, I'm going to give the value for seagrass 16 a 0.3. I don't think it's there. Now, if money's not an object to you, um, then, then go ahead, grab seagrass. It would be bunker worthy, but it is an object to me. <laughs> um, and so it's just, it's just too much. $250 is too much for this bottle. I would value it at about 150. I think that would have been the perfect price point. And then this would have been a bunker worthy bottle as it stands now with a value of 0.3, this seagrass 16 comes in with an overall score of a 3.8 making it bar worthy, not bunker worthy. If you can't get your hands on this or you don't wanna spend uh, you know, $250 for Seagrass 16, grab regular Seagrass. It is fantastic as well. Um, regular Seagrass was a bunker worthy bottle for me and one of my favorites of 2021. Um, 
but um, I do like Seagrass 16 more if money were not an issue. All right, guys, if you like today's episode, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of Seagrass. It is a divisive bottle. If you do not like sweet, a lot of people don't like this. If you like sweet, people love it and fall head over heels for it. I personally love Seagrass. I'm glad I have a lot of it. Uh, but please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Until next time, we will toast you guys out with the Seagrass 16. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Cheers, everybody. Oh, man. How do people not like that one? It's good. I'm not